Hello and welcome back to Switch and Lever. Today we have a bit of a different video for you. A walkthrough of the workshop at Umeå Institute of Design, where most of the previous videos have been made. Umeå is a town of about 100,000 in northern Sweden. Well known for its university as well as the beautiful surrounding nature. Our travel is taking us here, to Umeå Institute of Design, beautifully located by the river flowing through the city. The school was founded in 1989 and has been built on in stages since then, but there has always been a workshop of one sort or another. Now, in 2014, the workshop is much different than it was 25 years ago. Even though CNC machines and 3D printers have become commonplace, there is still a strong culture of manual model making and prototyping. We start out in the painting booth. Nothing special, it has a spray gun running on compressed air to enable the painting of bigger pieces. Painting, in turn, is supported by a DuPont paint mixing system, allowing the mixing of almost any color and finish imaginable. Just outside the painting booth we have some sheet metal working tools. A decent anvil, a sheet metal folder, metal working hammers, manual and compressed air metal shears, a bead blaster and a positively ancient looking roller. Coming out of the workshop we arrive at our first CNC mill of the day an Emco PC Mill 100. It's a recent acquisition and it hasn't been run much. Though it has a tool changer, so despite its age it shows quite some promise. Next to it we have a vacuum forming machine, built by a student of the school quite some years ago and capable of pulling quite big sheets of plastic. In the little room behind it our two Laser Pro Mercury laser cutters are standing. Hopefully they will be featured more in videos to come. And here comes the giant, the Kolb Studio Line 5 axis CNC mill. It's two stories tall and has enough reach to mill out a full sized car. It's a beast to see working, but at the same time beautifully delicate in its movements. The school has two 3D printers, this Z Printer 350, which prints in a more brittle plaster-like material, and the Object Eden 330, which can print in a more plastic or rubber-like material, most often used for prototypes as the end result can be handled without fearing it will break. In the back room there's another CNC mill, a Japanese 3-axis high gun. I don't know too much about it, as these machines are solely run by the workshop staff and not by the students. Back towards the main workshop we have a small polishing station, and shelves stocked with different dimensions and shapes of mainly steel and aluminum. For easy chopping there's an Italian Thomas Technics 315 metal chop saw, which chews through most metal like it's butter. There's a welding booth with both a MIG and a TIG welder. Around the corner we have a couple of generic belt sanders, and behind that door there's the clay workshop. Now for the more important machines. First in our line of lathes we have the Shoblin 102 metal lathe, with a 1.5 horsepower motor. It's a really capable and accurate lathe and it works great when you're doing smaller items. Next is my favorite lathe, the Colchester Triumph 2000 from the late 60s. Despite being a school lathe it's in surprisingly good condition. Behind the Colchester there is a Storebro GK195, a Swedish made lathe. Despite being Swedish myself, I generally don't use it, as it's just not as accurate. Onto my favorite machine in the entire workshop, the Asiera F3 mill. 
It's made in Switzerland and this model was made for quite some years. Though I suspect that this machine is from the late 50s or early 60s, judging from the looks. It's a beautiful and accurate machine, originally aimed towards watchmakers and the like, but it's extremely capable when it comes to all smaller machining operations. It comes fully kitted with all the bells and whistles, slotting attachment, rotary table, indexing head, you name it. Opposite to the Asiera, there is another Storebro machine. As with the lathe, I don't really use it much, as when I need bigger milling operations, I go to this mill instead, the Abena VHF3. It's another Swedish machine, made from the late 50s onwards. This one is likely from the late 60s or early 70s. When I need to remove a lot of material or square up larger pieces of stock, this is where you'll find me. For rougher metal cutting operations, there's also the Mester Record, a German-made metal bandsaw. On the woodworking side of the workshop, we have quite a few smaller hand tools and machines. Larger machines include a bandsaw, table saw, wood saw, thicknesser, jointer, disc and belt sander, and a shaper. Most machines are made by the company SAC out of Italy. The last place to show is where much of the actual magic happens, where things actually come alive, the interaction workshop. This is the main area for experimenting with electronics and building interactive things. It's always a mess, as that is the nature of experimentation. It's stocked quite well with soldering irons and miscellaneous tools required for working with electronics. Just outside the workshop, we have the Roland MDX 40A CNC mill. It's a small one and not especially powerful, but for milling out quick things from plastic or foam, it's a great little mill. I hope you enjoyed the tour, if you have any questions please write in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe for more material from Switch and Lever.